view. So I was going to introduce myself, but that I just got introduced. <laughs> so I was born in Vancouver, raised in Calgary. Uh, I'm 28 years old, and I spent 16 years doing luge. Started when I was 12 years old. Uh, I was on the national team for 10 years, and um, now here I am telling you guys this. I can remember three, two, two years ago sitting here, and they said, "Why did you come here?" I said, "Well, if that was me, I was because my coach told me to." <laughs> and when I left, did I get anything out of it? Well, maybe. Um, if you guys are looking for something like I was when I was sitting in your spot, I was looking for this is how you do it. This is the A, B, C, one, two, three of how we're going to get through it. And you're not going to find that here because there is no way to get through it. Unfortunately, there's not. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you my story. And after that, I'm going to give you a couple things, ideas. I just want to know who in here, like, what, what sports are we from? I, I, there's, you guys are from rugby, you got rowers, swimmers, swimmers, swimmers and athletics. athletics. And who's in school, university, yeah? Who's finished school? Who's done a little bit of work? Okay, good. I just don't want to you know, talk about going through school a lot if you guys are already past that point in your, in your life. Um, so we're nine months out from the games and uh, I understand completely that you know, people are saying, let's put this plan into place and this structure and this. We, you don't have time. I didn't have time for it. So what I'm going to give you guys is stuff that you can do, hopefully, just while you're riding your bike in your recovery from a workout, while you're going down the rowing, you know, rowing nerve, just stuff to think about. Because what transition really is about, what I've found out, isn't about the exact plan that you have in place, but the knowledge that you can put a plan into place. Um, so what I'm going to go over, um, that's pretty much it. A good, interesting quote that I heard here was, uh, um, "If sport is uh, sport, it, it your sport is all you have." Um, that's something I want to touch on. Uh, I will a little bit further, but just the idea that is sport all you have is that all you are through sport. Uh, I was told a lot. Oh yeah, you have you don't know it yet, but a lot of the other stuff that you learned as an athlete will transition perfectly into the real world. Um, and what I want to try and get across today is that. There is no, this is a real world. Wherever you're going to end up is also a real world. Um, and that this whole idea of straight transitions, you already are where you're going to be. And I, hopefully that will make sense as I, as I talk a little bit more. Um, so as, uh, as I, Amy said, I competed in the 2006 and 2010 games. Uh, going through the 2006 games, I knew that I was going to continue sliding. They'd already given the games to Vancouver, home games no chance that I'm going to stop. Um, I was just going through. So that was a completely different game. So coming up, I didn't even think of transition. I just went. Looking back on it, I was really lucky that in my 16 years, I didn't get injured and it was time for me to go. Because if that happened to me, I wouldn't have been ready. So again, as we're talking about transitions, I want to make sure that just because we're going up to an Olympics and we're thinking maybe we can transition out of that, transition can happen at any time. And depending on the sport, I mean, my sport, I'm going down the hill, one bad accident, I'm done. I don't know, like I'm thinking rugby. You put your head in the wrong spot, you're done, right? So this isn't just about leaving the Olympics. This is about the whole going through sport. Um, my Olympic experience uh, in Vancouver, um, it was unbelievably crazy, ups and downs. We spent three years uh, out, out in Whistler before the Olympics, training, 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 taking runs, taking runs. It was all focused on Whistler. It was all focused on that event. It was, it was intense. We spent a lot of time. Usually our training day, we, it sounds kind of slack, but we usually take four or five runs. That's about all our bodies can take. In Whistler, they're pushing us down 14 times a day. Again, this whole repetition thing. Um, when it came to the games, I mean, you guys all know what would happen to lose the games, right? Day out, 24 hours before our event, guy dies. No dart. Run off the track, hit a pole, he's dead. Um, we tr there are probably people tell you, Prepare for everything. So every circumstance we're going to have coming to the games. Well, that was one circumstance that we hadn't even fathomed. So 24 hours out, three, four years. Uh, I, people say three, four years of getting ready for this. I say 16 years of getting ready for this because I've been getting ready for this since I first took my first run down. And all of a sudden, everything gets pulled out from underneath you. They're switching start heights. They're changing everything. Um, again, for me, that was it was a pretty emotional time. You know, I put in all this time, and I, I started getting down on myself. I thought, ah. Crap, like you put in all this time and you know, a force that you know you couldn't control. 
it's, it's just wrecking of what you could do. It's wrecking your potential. I mean, I went behind the start house and broke a couple pieces of wood and you know did the typical freak out because that's what I need to get out of my body. Um, but that's what happened at my game, so we won't go kind of past that. Um, through the event, it was you know great. Uh, this is really interesting. We talked a little bit about what do you do right after the games? What do you do, you know? four days later, what do you do the second week? Luge is interesting, we're done our season uh, after the games and we compete day one and day two of the games. So we hang around after. Um, what I did after, my family came out because it was a home games, so instantly after the race, I went down to town and just hung out with them. Just was, the, I had 30 people who came out and I just went and saw them. And you, that's kind of when it first clicked to me. I didn't achieve the result that I wanted to going to the, going into the Olympics. I didn't at all. My results were higher than that. My training runs were great. I finished 14th, and to me, what I considered what my metric was, that was a failure for me. You know, it was the exact same as I'd done four years before, 2006, and it's kind of like, oh, great. I don't really want to go down and see my family. I don't want to show my face. You know, I didn't achieve what I thought I could achieve. But when I walked into that room, what I realized was they didn't really care. It wasn't about my sport. And it wasn't about the place I got. It was more about who they perceived me as being. Who they thought this guy was. Oh, so cool. Like, he just went through all this and came down the hill. And oh, it's so cool. It's just awesome. You put in so much work. Congratulations. And it kind of opened my mind to the fact that we all do compete heavily for places. Big time. Own the podium. Set up for it. And it's amazing. It's made Canada, I think, much, much better in the world of sports. And hopefully we'll continue to do so. But when it comes down to it, you have to compete for yourself. So, as I kind of left the games, um, I instantly, uh, I couldn't, I, I wasn't able to deal with stuff. I wasn't able to deal with emotions and stuff. I didn't want to go home. Uh, the day after the closing ceremonies, I hopped on a plane and took off to Hawaii. Uh, spent a week there, just not even t talking to anyone, not calling anyone, just was there with a couple buddies. Like, the Olympics never happened. I was almost avoiding them. Um, I came home for two weeks, and then I took off to Germany. Uh, I went to Germany for six weeks. Uh, I have a passion for brewing. I worked in a local brewery. Um, just took off. I didn't know if I was going to retire. I didn't know if I was going to slide. I just didn't know. I was in Germany. I got an email uh, that said, hey, the, you know, training starts April 1st. Oh, cool. Okay. Interesting. My flight happened to come home, uh, well, it was supposed to come home April 30th, but uh, that darn volcano blew up, and I got stuck in Europe for a week, which wasn't a bad thing. So I stayed in Europe for another week, uh, came home, and I just didn't have a sense of where I wanted to go, so I went back to training. Started training, started training some more. Four months later, I thought, oh, I just put in four months of training. I may as well slide another season. Don't really have anywhere else to go, <laughs> anything else to do. But that kind of triggered me and clicked me right away that I thought, whoa, I need something else to go on to. I need an idea. So what I did that summer is that I started looking at ideas. So I started looking at what, where I could go for my schooling. You know, Luge, we are away so much that we don't really have time for doing school. We're away from like October till uh, February in Europe, and so to uh, accomplish school, it was really a difficult task for me. And I knew that was something I wanted to finish. I knew I had to finish my school because I couldn't transition out from that. So I started thinking about it. I started thinking, you know, how am I going to do this? I started looking into schools and stuff like that. And it wasn't a time-consuming thing. I just started thinking. That was the biggest thing. Then I started sliding this season, got halfway through the season, and I lost my desire to race. I used to coin myself as a racer. Jeff was a racer. You know, like, would I train that well? Eh, you know, he'd make it down the hill. But then on the race day, he'd do it. That's what he was. And all of a sudden, I lost this. And I was like, whoa, I like training. I'm not really pumped for race day. What's going on? Like, who I was, who I thought I was, was changing, and it kind of scared me. So, halfway through the season, I started thinking, you know what, this is probably it. This is probably my last time. You know, I'm probably not going to do this anymore. And it kind of scared me, because I thought, wow, like 16 years, over half my life, I've been doing this, and this is who I was. And so I thought to myself, how do I decide to move away from this sport near the end of the year. Like three races out from the end of the year, I was, I knew I was done. It was, it, it wasn't the best, the best thing, but it was kind of fun to know the next couple races or, you know, just really enjoy it. Um, so I started thinking about, you know, what can I do? What, what, what involvement do I want with my sport after? You know, do I, do I hit it? Do I say, peace guys, I'm out, I'm gone. Do I like, maybe I still like my uh, sport idea, but I don't like luge anymore. 
okay, that's cool. So I started thinking again, what do I want after this? The one thing that I want to try and tell you guys is think about right now how much work you have done to get to this point. How many years? I'm guessing a fair amount. It's not just, oh, I want to do this, I'm going to show up and do it. One thing I want to make sure that you guys know, because I've, and I figured this out probably about mm, two weeks ago, getting into real life and out of sport is just as much work and just as much time as it took you to get here. It's not, I'm here and I can just take off now, this is perfect. It's like, great, you know, I did a lot of work, I can go in there. It's one of the best and worst things about sport, in my opinion is that you work to get to the highest level. If you did that and got to the you know, CEO job, you can you know, jump around between CEO and VP at different places. You get to the highest point of sport, there's not many places you can go with that, right? In most sports, especially mine, I mean, there's no professional, no nothing. You gotta go back to the bottom and you gotta work to get back to where you wanna be. Um, so, here's what I suggest. We're nine months out and really, I don't, if you guys are going to the games, I was stressed. I was, you know, if I was focused. Like it was set up here on the screen, I thought if I start thinking and making plans, I'm taking my eye off the ball. I'm taking my eye off the goal. And if I do that, well, you know, that's not going to work. So I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, go figure out your schooling, go figure out this, go figure out that, because you don't have time for that. I get it. So the three, four things, five things that I was want to just leave you with, here's what I suggest. And if you take one of them, that's awesome. Decide who you want to be when you retire. Um, decide how you want to retire. I coined what I call retiring as I have retired as an active athlete, an active luge athlete. I mean, an active elite athlete. I didn't ever retire as an athlete. That was just where I wanted to go. I always wanted to be an athlete. I'm still an athlete but I'm not an active, high-performance elite athlete in my sport. I'll be back in Calgary in December, I'll take a couple of runs down the track, because I like that, you know? You guys play rugby still, you row still, who knows? You guys swim still, you don't know. But decide how you want to retire, how you want to leave. Because no matter what it is, it's kind of that party moment. If you win that last medal in the last race and you never won a medal before, you get remembered for that. The last thing I tell you guys and I sit down, I'll probably stick with you. When you decide to retire or leave is what I call an active athlete, I'm still very involved in luge, um, they're going to remember you by that. Um, I want you to think about who you will be without the structure of being an athlete. This was really difficult for me. For a solid 10 years, you know, every March I'd get a piece of paper that would tell me where I was going to be for the next year more or less. You're going to be here training, you're going to be here doing that, you're going to be here doing that, and when you show up for that day, here's the program you're going to do, and here's this that you're going to do. That structure, it, it leaves you. And you gotta decide, you know, how am I gonna do that? Am I gonna create my own structure? Am I gonna be like, yes, I don't have that, and that's perfect, but just think. That's all I think we need to do right now, is think. And then the other one, this is a little deeper, and if you guys think it's hokey, that's okay, but there's something that I really, I really like doing, is ask yourself who you are. Who you really are. Who you, what you stand for, what gets you excited, what makes you wanna get out of bed. And don't let that answer be the sport that you're about to do. It could be the reason why you're gonna go do that sport, because that's part of who you are. It could be the reason, but it's not that sport specifically. You know, if you want to get out of bed to do that sport because you want to become the best, well, becoming the best is part of who you are, not the sport. So I think that's got another, one idea is just think about that kind of thing. Again, realize that leaving as an active retired athlete or as an active athlete, leaving active athlete status is just as much work as getting to where you are right now. Um, and this one was funny for me, and I don't know if you guys will find it, but in luge, I spent a lot of time putting on a lot of extra weight. I was in the gym, 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 gym. You gotta accept that your body's probably gonna change. <laughs> I mean, for me, 10, or, uh, 12 months ago, if I was standing here, I would have had 10 more kilos on me. You gotta accept that that's gonna happen. And so that's a psychological thing that I think, uh, I don't know if some people will go through it, some people won't, some people gain weight, some people lose weight. But it doesn't change who you are, right? We define ourselves as who we are through the sport. But like I said, I think it's really important to make sure that we know who we are as ourselves. So that's kind of my story. That's kind of the message I wanted to try and get across. Um, 
I will not sit here and say, you know, they, the, the, it was quote unquote, um, I've six, I got an email saying, we'd like you to come talk because you've successfully navigated the transition. No, I haven't. <laughs> there was bumps. I'm not going to sit here and be like, hey guys, yeah, it was easy. Go do it. Man, it was hard. You know what? Like, uh, yeah, I can be completely honest with you guys. In the year after, or I retired in March, but from March until now, I have never cried so many times in my life as I have in that point because I didn't know what was going on. It was something so incredibly new for me. So when, you, when the time approaches, you know, if you don't have a plan, that's okay. It, as long as you know who you are, that you can put in a plan. You, you need a distant. You know, you need to be able to say, you know what? I know who I am. I know kind of what I want to do. You got to create everything so that you can piece it together. I think that's kind of the most important thing is that just that thought. So the next nine months, train your arses off because that's going to be really important. When you have time, just think. Just think kind of where you want to go, what you want to do, who you want to be, who you are. So thanks a lot.